Hi guys and girls, I'm Wolfgang and today we will be building and reviewing Manx Tiger 2 with the production turret in 35th scale. I have waited long for this day, it's always a special occasion to build one of the big boys. I mean, just look at this thing, it's fucking amazing. The main gun alone was worth 5th of the Panzer IV. Let's move on and build this beast of a machine. The first step is to build in the suspension holding parts. This is necessary since the kit can be equipped with an interior that's sold separately that includes torsion bars, but here it needs to be replaced by these parts on both sides. There are also two inner walls to give the plastic hull more structural integrity. Unfortunately, the Tiger II has the so-called Schachtelaufwerk, lovingly called Scheißlaufwerk by me. The suspension method is a mechanically good way of distributing weight, since the road wheels are intertwined, but it's a pain in the butt for the crew if they need to replace the inner road wheels. This also means there's a metric ton of sanding involved with cleaning the many road wheels of excess material. Fortunately, this kit is the version with the mixed color parts and fixed suspension. The red only had a crooked one. Unfortunately though, you won't be able to tell which box includes the updated parts. Good news is, you may get the first batch with the metal barrel included. So far so good. No fit issues going on here and the wheels have poly caps, so fitting them requires no glue and all wheels can be removed if necessary. Perfect for putting on tracks and painting them separately. The suspension arms are keyed, so you can only put them on at the correct angle. The upper hull has an inner wall in the front as well, to replicate the armor thickness in scale on the interior version of the kit. Here it only helps to align it to the lower hull and holds the MG ball mount. The back of the hull gets a support piece for the engine deck, which helps to somewhat keep it in shape. The upper plate looks nice and has crisp details. The fit is great so far. As described in the beginning of our lovely article on our website, the Tiger II was designed to be a heavy breakthrough tank, but often lacked the spears and fuel to make use of the excellent gun and armor capabilities. The Tiger II concept traces its origins in the very same place as the VK30.01 arose. The Tiger II was however not the next step of the Tiger I, that was a stopgap attempt to create the heavy tank that was envisioned before. The Tiger II was not a rushed plan, at least not as much as the Tiger I, but a concerted effort to design a bigger and better tank capable of meeting the needs of the German army in the short to medium term future. The whole engine deck is highly detailed and has beautiful PE parts that fit amazingly. I would have liked to show you the assembly process of these sub-assemblies, but my big fingers and close-ups don't mix well. No fit issues again, but the space between the plates of the engine deck is too big if you don't align all the pieces exactly where they should go. So take care, there are no helping tabs or markings here. Mang also includes the little bending tool for the top mesh near the turret, works great and only some minor bending is needed afterwards. I decided to add some damage to the meshes with the hobby knife, but be really careful, I had the luck to rip one mesh off the deck and had to re-glue it. Speaking of modifications. Since I decided to replicate an existing tank, I had to remove some panels of the mudguard. Always mark the parts you want to remove, so you won't cut out what's needed. An alcoholic marker is excellent for this purpose. I also sanded the edges to make the mudguard look thinner and cut off the sides on the front mudguard. The best example of this design not being only an updated Tiger I is the sloped armor that gives the hull a shape more akin to that of a lighter Panther tank. This was already showing in the Porsche designed Typ 180 of October 1941 to November 1942. The Versuchsturm test turret was not significantly changed compared to the design of the first 50 produced turrets. 
These early turrets were also equipped on operative vehicles since they were already built prior to them being approved. Our Tiger II tank in this video sports the production turret, which has no rounded parts and has no shot trap in the front. On screen you can see the schematic of the armor thickness and slope, courtesy of Königstiger.ch. Unfortunately, the fit of the inner and outer turret pieces is not exactly a dream. First it seemed to fit ok, but as soon as I attached the front armor of the turret it was all over the place and I don't know if I just messed up or the kit is wonky here. I have built this kit before and had this exact same issue. Could be a shitty fit or I just need to concentrate more while building stuff. Let me know if you had the same issue in the comments. Of course, this nearly 70 ton beast had to be moved by a capable engine, which the Maybach HL230P45 was to an extent. The top speed of the Tiger II was around 35 km per hour on the road, if and when the stars aligned well enough. The range was around 170 km. Let's talk a bit about the tracks. I bought metal transfer tracks since the tank had those equipped. But I ordered the early version instead of the late ones, my bad. Good news is, I can always just replace them if I get the ones that are needed here. I used AK burnishing fluid to paint feather them. I had to add some water to submerge them fully and yet another fuck up on my part. The crevices were somehow not weathered. Next time I will apply the burnishing fluid with a brush first and then submerge them for full effect. Otherwise they turned out great and some pigments will make the crevices look better anyways. But let's move on from my whack job building this piece to painting it. It dawned on me after I finished the build that I probably should have primed this kit because of the fit issues on the upper and lower hull and the turret. Eh, at least I used some putty on the turret and the hull wasn't that bad. Anyway, I used the ammo by Mick Tiger 2 booklet for some reference and deciding on which tank I should build. I quickly decided on the famous Tiger 2 that was knocked out near the city of Kassel, which the lovely octopus ambush camouflage. It's pretty weird since the camo pattern was clearly applied on the field, it's easily visible if you take a look at the mudguard's place. The camo pattern should vanish at that line but it was painted further indicating that the mudguards were already missing when they painted the tank. The main gun was the excellent high velocity 88mm KVK-43 L71. It was also mounted on the Narshorn slash Hornisse, Elephant slash Ferdinand and Jagdpanther. This gun had a muzzle velocity of 1130 meters per second, which the Panzergranate 40-43 APCR round. This was also able to propel the projectile as far as almost 10 kilometers, the effective range was shorter of course. For anti-personnel roles, two MG-34s were mounted on the tank. An MG-34 could be mounted on the cupola as well.
I used AK real colors again, I might be biased here, but I really like the colors and the application is really easy and the paint won't clog in your airbrush. The Dunkelgelb based on could have been more shaded, but the end result is still decent in my opinion and the camo scheme takes the cake anyways here. I also painted small details like the handle of the hammer and fire extinguisher with a small brush. I painted the barrel of the main gun in German grey as the illustration in the Tiger 2 booklet looked the same. It may have just been burned out and be the true metal color underneath, but some artistic freedom can be taken, especially if the chosen subject does not have much background information to work with. Also, it looks way cooler this way. Sometimes the rule of cool just wins. After all the base painting, I sprayed a layer of glossy varnish to protect the paint job during the chipping process. It turned out one layer wasn't enough in all places, but the great thing is the kit is mostly red oxide primer colored by default. So those scratches look good after all and have some 3D effect. Since there's actual chipping happening. Also, some touch-ups with the 10 over 0 brush will fix those issues on any kit. After the hairspray dried, I used a soft pencil to draw the outlines of the camo and used masking putty to protect the Dunkelgeld parts. From then on, it's just a massacre of olive green in the tall RAL 6003. After a few minutes of drying time, I just removed the putty and it's satisfying to see the camo for the first time and peeling off the putty. Next step is to paint on the green circles. I'm using a small brush to do so and I try to replicate the placement of them as close as possible to the reference photos. It helps a lot to print them and use them as reference during the painting phase. The last step is to give the paint job some scratches with a wet brush. Now that the painting is done, it's time to weather this big kitty. As usual, I start off with a dark brown wash to give the vehicle shadows and make the small parts pop out a little more. After the wash has dried, I simply use a cotton swab or brush with a tiny amount of white spirit to remove excess wash. The exhaust pipes get the usual rust pigment treating. I start with the base tone, it's a brownish mix of acrylics. While the paint is still wet, I apply the pigments with a dry brush. It's important to use multiple tones of rust to make the pipes look realistic. There are some parts on the tank that have become broken during the lifetime of this tank. In my interpretation this happened in the near past, therefore I paint a metallic iron tone on those parts and on some weld marks as well. 
since those never got rusty due to the used weld material. It's a tiny detail, but this can easily improve the authenticity of your kits and is always a nice touch. I also apply a small amount of mud paste above the tracks and apply a pigment wash on it and the mud guards. Touching, <laughs> pun intended, on some other aspect of the armor, the Zimmerate. The early versions of the Tiger II had a factory applied coat of Zimmerate which is largely thought to have been done in order to protect the vehicles from magnetic mines. Which is a nice idea, but only the Germans used those type of mines in larger numbers. Making the Zimmerate coat kind of unnecessary and just adding another layer of complexity of production. However, there are arguments it also greatly helped with camouflage. For us modelers, this is a fun little choice though, since Zimmerate really looks cool and can elevate the kit. But since I didn't feel like applying it with putty or buying pre-cut sheets for this kit, I chose the Castle Tiger 2, which has had no Zimmerit on it. The wheels also got a dark brown wash and then some graphite to make them look worn from the contact with the track lengths and each other. I also used metallic pigments on the load-bearing part of the wheels. The pencil is also used to make highlights on the edges of the tank. Last but not least, I apply all paint spots in order to replicate rust and rain streaks on the vehicle. I first apply the rust streak with a 10 over 0 brush and use a dry or stiff brush or cotton swab to make the streaks. The rain streaks are created the same way, just with white, beige or yellow paint. Abandoned near the Henschel factory at Kassel, our Tiger II was operated by men of the 3rd company of the Schwerer Panzer Abteilung 510, displaying a hastily applied camouflage pattern. The backward swastika was painted on some time after its abandonment. I built the kit to represent it shortly before abandonment by its crew. Remarkably, the crew managed to repair this knocked out Tiger II with a new engine and it moved off to Bad Lautenberg. This small unit conducted various skirmish actions between Braunlage and Eland on the 8th of April but was formally disbanded on the 17th of April. The remaining five tanks, one had been blown up on 5th of April when it broke down, were abandoned. On 18th of April though, soldiers from the SS Panzerbrigade Westfalen forced one of the crews of the Schwerer Panzerabteilung 507 to reoccupy one of these abandoned tanks and fire at American tanks in the Bode Valley. A couple of US tanks were knocked out in doing so, but when artillery was directed at the Tiger II, it was abandoned a second time. That was the last combat action of the Schwerer Panzerabteilung 510. I could go on and on with technical aspects and historical bits about the Tiger II, but I only have so much screen time and you should really check out our excellent rewritten article on it. You will like it, trust me. Let's summarize what this kit has to offer. The details are nicely done, there are some issues fixed already, but you won't know what you can expect since the updated parts are in the same box as the first batch of kits. Then there's the price point. I bought the kit for about 20 euros and it's constantly on sale. 
There aren't a lot of options in that price range, especially with this amount of detail. Yet I'm not too happy about it. The turret fit was horrible and the hull wasn't a dream either. You can however certainly buy far worse kits for this amount of money, so this one gets an approved stamp from me. If you like this video and want to see more tank related content on our page and on YouTube, please visit our Patreon site if you'd like to donate. For more interesting content visit one of the shown outlets. Thanks for watching this video, next time we will take a look at one of the most iconic MBTs currently in service.